Fairfield City Council special meeting. Thank you all for being here. And Councilman Tim, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Oh, I'd like to take roll first. Oh. Council Member Bertani? Here. Council Member Moy, are you on the line? She was planning to call in. Council Member Panduro? Here. Council Member Tim? Here. Council Member Tonneson? Here. Vice Mayor Vicaro? Here. And Mayor Price? Here. Thank you. We have a quorum. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And Madam Clerk, if you would please process for public comment. Yes, persons wishing to address the City Council on subjects on the agenda may do so at this time. The Council cannot discuss or take action on matters not on the agenda for this meeting. To speak on an agenda item, please complete a speaker's card if you haven't already done so. When joining via Zoom, please use the raise your hand feature or press star nine on your phone to request to speak. Speakers are limited to three minutes. And did we want to hear public comment before David presents? No, Madam Clerk, I think we're going to have the consultant do the presentation, okay. and then we'll take public comments, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, item one, Fairfield Forward 2050 General Plan Update Project, and our presenter is Dave Feinstein, our planning manager. Thank you very much. Good evening, Mayor Price, members of the City Council. I'm Dave Feinstein. I am the planning, uh, planning manager for the city. Tonight is the latest in a series of workshops that staff is holding with the City Council and the public regarding alternatives for our general plan update. As you're aware, we've been working on an update to the city's general plan for a little over a year now. Our general plan was last fully updated in 1992 with some substantial amendments about 20 years ago. So as you all know, it's, uh, it's definitely time to be looking at the future and our next 30 years with a fresh general plan. So tonight is the latest in a series of workshops we've been holding on the alternatives. We've been working on the alternatives for a number of months. And tonight's topic will focus on the area connecting the central part of the city with Cordelia, what uh, we generally refer to as the, the Sassoon Valley area, and some peripheral uh, land along the edges of Sassoon Valley. Uh, we discussed this originally with the City Council last November, gave a presentation, heard from a number of uh, residents and members of the community uh, who had concerns and issues with the various alternatives that were presented to you at that time. City Council gave direction back to staff to further engage with the Sassoon Valley community, learn more about what their interests were, what they, what they were concerned about, uh, to engage with landowners, to find out you know, what individual landowners might like to see for their property. And so we've been doing that. And tonight, we're going to come back, we're going to report on those meetings, uh, give you some additional information, and then after additional public comment, look to get direction from the City Council regarding this area uh, uh, within our general plan about what you would like to see as the preferred alternative for this area. So as you're aware, Diet and Bhatia is our consultant and Allison Moore is our uh, lead staff with Diet and Bhatia helping us with the general plan update. She's gonna give the presentation for you tonight and I'm gonna turn the meeting over to Allison. Thank you, Dave, and good evening, council members and mayor. All right, so as Dave mentioned tonight, we're hoping to continue our conversation about the vision and receive direction for the Sassoon Valley area and uh, Nelson Hill. So Dave also mentioned um, at the last, um, at the council meeting in November, we heard from numerous people, including county and Fairfield residents, farmers, vintners, and other business owners about the importance of Sassoon Valley 
And um, since then, we have gone back into the community and conducted various interviews with individuals, stakeholder group discussions um, with the Orderly Growth Committee and the Sassoon Valley Vintners and Growers Association, and hosted two small group discussions with landowners in a portion of land north of I-80 and south of I-80. At the last study session, we also heard that there was desire to learn more ab about exactly what people wanted to see in Cordelia and where it should go. And to accommodate that, we will be hosting an in-person workshop on April 28th at the Cordelia Library, uh, 6 to 7.30 p.m. to RSVP for that. Um, it recommended, not required. It's on the Fairfield Forward website, uh, fairfieldforward.com. So, um, tonight, we've been exploring various alternatives and concepts for how Fairfield might achieve growth and community vision through different land use patterns in the alternatives. At the last study session, you gave us clear direction on areas in central Fairfield, including support for additional mixed uses and housing opportunities that bolster the vision for the heart of Fairfield specific plan in the downtown and around the key transportation hubs like the Transportation Center and the Fairfield Sassoon train station. North Texas Street and the Solano Town Center Mall were also identified as areas for bold major transformation with additional housing, community, and employment uses and more. For Western Fairfield, we heard that more input was needed to determine exactly what and where land uses should go in Cordelia. The land use pattern and recent development underlies some of the main issues there. Um, and we had heard throughout the community engagement process that people desired more community amenities like a grocery store or restaurants or emergency services. Um, people voiced concerns about traffic and additional strain on existing services. Uh, but we had also heard from landowners of vacant parcels that their current designated use uh, was not feasible and that residential uses represent the highest and best use of their property. For Fairfield's sphere of influence west of Business Center Drive, we heard support for commercial and visitor serving uses like hotels as people come from other cities to visit the future Flyway Center. And I give all of this information so we have context for what, what other ideas um, uh, are likely to be included in the preferred plan and to give us some context for discussion tonight. Um, so before we dig into um, input from our Sassoon Valley stakeholders, it, uh, it's important to raise the following consideration. So one of our principal challenges that we face is how to balance land uses to address the city of Fairfield's needs over the next 30 years. A market analysis conducted for Fairfield as part of the background um, information last year provided a range of projections for needed industrial land and employment supporting uses. Industrial land often requires a lot of acreage to support the types of jobs that Fairfield seeks to capture, included tr including traded sector jobs like advanced manufacturing or food manufacturing. And with new and expanding businesses and a growing population comes rising demand for larger spaces that support logistics and distribution. And this industrial land projection ranges from 2.7 million square feet at the lowest end and 11.1 million square feet at the highest end. And while Fairfield does have a fair amount of vacant land, much of it is spoken for in projects that have already been approved um, or is already accounted for in specific plans like the train station specific plan. There's about 1.8 million square feet of that in pipeline development and train station specific plan and about 338 acres of vacant land remaining that is designated industrial. So that means if Fairfield were to plan for two thirds to three fourths range of the maximum growth, the average of that range, which is 65 to 129, is about 100 acres. So with that in mind, um, you know we're not making any suggestions this evening as to where it should go, but just something to consider as we have future meetings moving forward as well. And we can see here that currently the vacant industrial land shown in purple is in the Cordelia area and then um, in, in the current industrial areas. So um, that, that's just one perspective here. Um, but with that in mind, we want to share input from our Sassoon Valley stakeholders as well. And we had heard from the um, 
orderly growth committee that the value of prime agricultural land in Sassoon Valley can't, can't be overstated and that development that reduces this land shouldn't happen anywhere in the valley. While several worked on and acknowledged the value in the county's Sassoon Valley strategic plan, some expressed concern that provision of infrastructure to higher intensity agritourism uses that are present in that plan could create development pressures. We heard some suggestions to incorporate more agritourism oriented uses in Cordelia or downtown that can showcase Sassoon Valley's bounty without impeding on the land. We heard similar sentiments from the Vintners and Growers Association that the entirety of the valley is an American viticultural area and that value of the land and productive soil needs to be preserved. So I'll speak on the next si slide about areas they identified as not being agriculturally viable that could potentially be an option. So we can see on this map shown on the screen here that there are areas of prime farmland, that's farmland that is um, agriculturally productive and important, um, but some areas currently used for grazing land, which you can see in the light yellow, and then other land that does not have agricultural significance in the tan here. So for, we had more area-focused discussions with property owners in the north and south. We had small focus groups. And a few themes and points of interest emerged for uh, northern, north of I-80. Um, I'll first focus on that area, which we are defining as the area south of Rockville Road, that area in the pink shown in this map here. And we heard from the Vintners and Growers Association that much of the land north of I-80 is actively farmed and productive, though there are some areas north of the college, shown in orange here, that are not, um, not good for farming. The land east of this parcel here um, is grazing land, as, we, um, as I mentioned. Um, and then land to the west in the county here is designated as residential. And as we had heard in the meeting prior around Cordelia, there is concern about the need for services, schools, and additional infrastructure in Cordelia. And this, this orange parcel, or perhaps this, could potentially be options. So for our property owner discussions, uh, we heard from a number of landowners in these areas in green and blue outlined here. Property owners for the lands in blue largely desired keeping an agricultural use and focus. And then with one exception, property owners in the green areas for where there are already more urbanized uses um, and developed areas express desire for incorporation to receive city services. However, as can be seen, the area is largely developed and there wouldn't be a significant opportunity for um, any land use uh, change there. So to the south, too, we heard from Orderly Growth Committee and the Vintners and Growers that the land is also farmed and also prime agricultural land in this area. But we did hear a diversity of thoughts and future visions for various property owners. Um, so like, like the north, there was a contingency of property owners that did want this area to remain agricultural. They had land in their families for generations. But then other landowners, too, um, that desire to see some change. Um, some others, like Camus and other um, business owners down there, were excited to see how agritourism could help them expand their business, but thought that that could be done as part of the county. Um, so, but specifically, uh, the landowners of the lands in orange and green expressed an openness to various uses and in the case of the green, um, a preference for industrial or agricultural industrial uses. And then here's a, a close up that we can get into later for the discussion. So finally, since Nelson Hill is next to Sassoon Valley, we wanted to seek direction on that as well. The property owner, um, the Nelson family, has recently submitted a letter requesting annexation of the property, outlining a plan for single family development and about 150 acres of open space of its 230 acres. And this plan is consistent with what's currently outlined in the current general plan, which designates Nelson Hill as a master plan area where residential and open space uses are, just, are outlined. So with those considerations about employment uses and with uh, our Sassoon Valley 
community input in mind, we are seeking your guidance on what should happen in these areas, north of I-80, south of I-80, and in Nelson Hill. Um, I'm going to pause here, um, but generally the questions to keep in mind when we go back to discussion after public comment are, are there any areas where the city should consider development north of I-80 or south of I-80? Where should the city consider jobs related uses or other uses in these areas? And if not in these areas, where, where else might they go? If development is desired, what are ideas on how to reduce impacts to agricultural areas that the city seeks to preserve? And are there any other concepts or strategies that council recommends to support Sassoon Valley agritourism? So with that, I will, I will stop there and um, we'll, we'll return to Northern Sassoon Valley after public comment. Thank you. Any comments or <coughs> colleagues? Okay. okay. Did you want to hear public comment? I think we can okay. take public comments um, now, please. Our first commenter is Monica Brown. to be followed by, I believe it's Christopher Engel. All right, here we go. So Nelson Hill, which I love and adore, and I don't mind when it catches on fire a couple times a year, is I'm curious as to how you're gonna get all these people up there, because you're gonna have to expand the two-lane road there's just basically a two-lane road that gets us around through Cordelia. I would prefer that there not be homes up there and just keep it open space and make it a part. And yes, I have no problem paying taxes to make that happen, even though it's in the unincorporated area. Um, I'm not happy about, I wanna throw out the smart train because you guys talked about that before. So here's the problem, and I've, I've said it before and I'm gonna say it again. It's gonna be like regional measure three, where we don't get the money, but we pay for the tolls which now will not happen until 2034, which I think if we could change the rules, we could have that money to go to Highway 37 and then we wouldn't have to have a toll there. So the smart train in 2024 has to have a sales tax to increase it and bring it over. We'll get snagged into that. And then for the next 80 years or something, we'll be paying a sales tax on something that will never come here. Because we need to look at the fact that people are gonna be working more and more from home. And so I really, if you want to you go to the train, you can get over, and I do take the train, but I don't believe bringing a smart train from Marin, um, uh, Marin, I can't think it's smart, Sonoma, Sonoma Marin, all the way over, pick it up and go on the little rickety thing that goes through, and then we're gonna put in a train station right there, right in the open space that I wanna to continue to say open space. The, we did have industrial land, and so the question becomes to the city council, why didn't you guys utilize that time that, that we had already on the other side of Hale Ranch, going between Hale Ranch over to, uh, to uh, Beck Avenue? You allowed you know, this to grow and this to grow, but you didn't put in all when you had all the acres. And what makes you think those kinds of land uses are going to be profitable down the road and so it's very frustrating for me. So as somebody who's lived in my house since 1990, when I first moved in, we had Oak Brook, that's great. Then we moved Green Valley number two to Green Valley number three and then we put in Cordelia um, Hills and then we put in uh, Rodriguez and then we ended up getting, instead of having the automotive, remember the automotive that was supposed to be where Costco is? So now we have Safeway there. And so, and then, then all of that is all gonna get redone sometime or another. And I just think that people are looking for something to do when we should be looking at what you wanna do in downtown Fairfield and take each little section and make it a four story where the bottom is for businesses and second, third and fourth story are places for people can live. Because if Supervisor, you wanna have generational include, wealth, please? you have to own something guys. I'm not hearing that. So I'm not happy with where this is going. I'm not happy of how this was put together and now we're down to four seconds, so bye. Next speaker, Christopher Engel, to be followed by Jim DeClos. 
Good evening, members of the council. My name is Christopher Angle. I live at 3750 Thomason Lane, which is uh, south of I-80. And I wanted to thank you all for uh, having the consultant go back and uh, reevaluate the three alternatives that were being presented back in uh, October. We didn't feel we had enough time to, uh, to look at it. And at least, you know, they were willing to reach out. You guys, we had about 40 people here speaking, and you guys heard us and, you know, gave us a chance to have our uh, you know, have our voices heard, so I wanted to thank you for that. Uh, one of the questions that was brought up in the, uh, in the meeting with the, uh, with the uh, consultant is, what is our vision for our property? Now, my neighbors are the Ericsons, Ross Erickson. His vision is he's using part of my property to grow apples and his property to grow apples for his cider business. In addition, I'm looking, to, and he is as well, to put grapes, wine grapes, on our, on our property and in this way contribute to uh, the Susan Valley brand that's growing and becoming uh, much more well-known than it has been in the past. Um, in addition, I'd like to point out that our, our property had, is bordered by Susun Creek. And this area is, in my opinion, rather ill-suited for development because um, the area floods on a, very, on a fairly regular basis. Um, I've lived out there for the better part of 33 years, and we've had, we had floods in 95, 97, 2006, 2017, 2019, and we even had a small one um, where the water came over the levee in October of 2021. Um, this, this, this happens all the time. Because of the nature of the watershed and all the water coming running down through Susan Creek, it's going to be a problem. And mitigating that, which would have to happen for a large-scale development in that area, would likely require something reminiscent of L.A. River entirely putting the, basically concreting the whole thing in, which would destroy, which would destroy the uh, habitat for the animals that, uh, that we see uh, live there. So, in short, uh, we would like to see the, the, that area pretty much stay as it is. We have plans for our lands, and we'd uh, like to have the opportunity to, to realize those. Thank you. Thank you. And Councilwoman Moy is online now, so colleagues. Um, and Jim Declo, and then to be followed by Victoria Erickson. Thank you. I'm Jim Declo, and I've been a resident of Fairfield for 32 years. And uh, I've worked very hard for this community. And I would like to ask the following question. Who is the general plan for? Is it for the citizens or is it for special interest? Now, this isn't Vision 2020 where we had hundreds of meetings and thousands of hours and everyone involved. We had some meetings and the consultant came back and gave us this. In the last meeting, you had, I counted 67 people stand up and they said unanimously not a single dissent they said one thing hands off Sassoon Valley no none hands off Green Valley they said that unanimously now what you missed was the Planning Commission meeting that was before that there were an equal number of people that were equally emotional about that so who is the general plan for uh, I would like you when you consider this to express that if that orange area or the purple area heaven forbid or the blue area what is the benefit to the actual person to the average person the average person sees the impacts sees crowded freeways crowded streets uh, the Sassoon Valley Road narrowing into a bottleneck Green Valley Road a bottleneck uh, the average person sees the impact. The average person does not see any benefit at all. And please, 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 when you do this, if you, uh, and I'm going to use strong language, betray the community and develop in Sassoon Valley, do not please spare us the hypocrisy of words like connecting the, connecting the cherry stem or uh, connections or balance uh, if we're missing industrial land it's because past councils have redesignated industrial land for residential Fairfield corporate commons it was so sp supposed to be all corporate it's houses that entire area that is by between Sassoon Valley Road and Green Valley Road 
was supposed to be industrial, it's houses. You cannot beat us up by redesignating industrial land and then argue that you have to convert our precious jewel because we have a shortage of industrial zone lands. So let me again ask the following question. Who is this general plan for? Thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker, Victoria Erickson, to be followed by Duane Crom. Well said. Thank you. Uh, hi, Council. My name is Victoria Erickson. My husband, Ray, and son, Ross, own and operate Erickson Ranch on Cordelia Road. This property is included in the Vision 2050 of the Fairfield General Plan update. I've spoken to the Council previously as have the rest of the ag community. I will not belabor my point, but rather get to the point. First, I am satisfied to say that the City Council decided early on to postpone the original plan and instead have workshops and meetings to allow those that are most impacted by these changes have time to present the concerns of growth in Susan Valley. Most of the families in the valley are multi-generational and are very proud to continue to work the land handed down to them from their ancestors. As you all know, Erickson Ranch is opposed to the destruction that would occur to these family businesses if the original plan of Vision 2050 extended that growth of non-ag uses including housing and warehousing to Susan Valley. This change would destroy the ag community as we all know it now. The growth of 2050 should extend from the interior from the city of Fairfield, which is in desperate need of restructuring, and not into the beauty of the Susun Valley. Food for thought. I would like to mention that for those people who do not live in Susun Valley, what would be their reactions if a plan was put in place to change their livelihoods predicated on a plan they had no input on. Again, I mention my thanks to the City Council for listening to both sides. I appreciate the support and voices of all that are present here that want to keep Susun Valley, Susun Valley. The agricultural community of Susun Valley is strong and will stand up for itself to oppose the potential proposed changes that would change the valley forever. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, Duane Crom, to be followed by M Marilyn Farley. Good evening, council members. Um, I thought Allison did a fine job uh, capturing the discussion that we as orderly growth had with, um, it was with Dave and Dave Feinstein, city manager, interim city manager, is that the right title, Gasaway, and Allison and um, uh, her boss, whose name I forget. Okay. Ah, so I thought you captured that well. You know, the, the thing I find very interesting as we discuss the Sun Valley, the, the, you know, the thing that I hold near and dear in thinking about what to do with the Sun Valley is what I emailed to you guys this morning, the, you know, a link to the Sun Valley strategic plan that was put together um, through, I can't remember how many workshops, you know, maybe Linda remembers how many workshops was done in, in terms of, uh, you know, Sassoon Valley Vintners and Growers, uh, county staff, you know, other residents, a long process, an iterative, pro an iterative process where um, you know, concepts were put up on the wall, people made changes, people made suggestions, they came back, worked on it some more. You know, what worries me in this process tonight is that you're likely to give the consultants direction, the consultants will go back and just roll that into one big general plan, and there won't be that iterative process where it's like, oh, you thought about this, but you didn't think about that. And you know that process of deliberation, you know, these meetings are fine as far as they go, but you all know that these are formal, and that sitting around a table with a variety of like-minded people, or sometimes non-like-minded people, where you're battling it out, sometimes battling, sometimes agreeing, to figure out the details, it takes some time to take some work. And it doesn't take just input from you folks at this point to the consultants to then come back with, here's the fleshed out draft general plan. I would urge you to, to do something like this Soon Valley 
strategic plan process for this, how does Fairfield see itself fitting in around, maybe even in a little bit, with the, with the existing strategic plan? And then the big thing, you know, which we, we've, we have disagreed with this in the past now, is if we're going to protect Sassoon Valley, whether it's all of it or some of it, I don't know where you guys are going to go, but having that voter approval to make sure the valley does not get incurred upon by future councils and have future battles, I mean, having an urban growth boundary around the valley, which wherever we end up, voter approval, because I think as Jim put it, the, the folks of Fairfield love the love Sassoon Valley. They don't want to see more development. And the nature of so many general plans is, you know, piece by piece, inch by inch, things change over time. And, it, you know, we don't have the same number of people here tonight because most people thought that big discussion happened back in November. So it wears down to the general public to show up and continue doing those kinds of battles where voter approved urban growth boundaries will go through one big battle and say, okay, let's set it aside and work and, and deal with it. And then 20 years later, come back and revisit it. So please take your time with this one. And then whenever you come up with, please put it on the ballot to let the citizens of Fairfield say yay or nay. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, Marilyn Farley, to be followed by Jack Batson. Good evening, uh, members of the City Council, um, Interim City Manager David Gassaway, and the public. Uh, thanks again for the opportunity to speak tonight. Uh, I also want to say I appreciate that the outreach that uh, uh, David and the consultants did. Uh, I think it was a step in the right direction. I was a little surprised, though, when I got the uh, saw the council agenda, and it said something about the cherry stem and the Sassoon Valley and not much else. It's very hard for as a member of the public to prepare to make comments to you when I have no idea what's going to be presented. It must be hard for you too because we have had no chance to uh, try to absorb what uh, uh, Allison was presenting tonight. What does it mean? What do those little squares on the map mean? Why, why is that area in orange not suitable for agriculture? It's adjacent to many parcels that are suitable for agriculture. Why is this cherry stem in the agenda, but it wasn't mentioned in Allison's report? I still have I, no idea how, uh, why it's there and what that means, and I wish that the staff or someone would explain it. Uh, so that we could comment on it and you would understand too. Um, the meeting that we had with the consultants and David Gassaway, after the November 2nd city, meeting, uh, city Hall meeting, I was thinking, well, things are looking really good. And then at that meeting, we were pressed very hard to agree that it would be okay to put uh, 200 acres of this lower Susun Valley into agriculture that there was a property owner who wanted that. And wouldn't it just be okay, especially because maybe it could be something that converts agricultural products to meat. And we were pretty aghast because, again, this is prime ag land, and this is going to be a factory. It's going to have concrete walls, concrete floors. It could be located somewhere else, and the products that go into making that meatless product could be grown on that land. So it didn't make a lot of sense to it, but what it suggested is that the staff and the consultants were still getting pressure from the policymakers, I'm assuming, to have some development in the Sassoon Valley. I was very discouraged by that. I felt like we're, we're fighting an uphill battle here. Um, so what did I, I did uh, last night, I went through and I transcribed almost everyone's comments from the podium from that November 2nd medium. And those comments, I hope those are comments that you will, will stick to tonight. The first one was uh, the briefest of all. It was Scott's, and he held up the number four and said, uh, we need a fourth alternative. So I, I, th I think that was really important. Would you conclude, uh, Marilyn, please? Uh, okay, can I just say a couple more of the things you guys said? Rick Vaccaro, uh, I would, would never do that. Uh, your wife grew up in the valley. Pam, you had great comments. Chuck, you said we'd get this done. We'd work together something we could all live with. 
Harry, you said the valley is sacrosanct. And uh, uh, I believe that. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, Jack Batson, to be followed by William Penn. Good evening, Mayor and Council, and City Manager and Attorney. Um, you know, you, you, you have a public interest, not a private interest in this. You know that there's a, there's a public interest in the property you're talking about for industrial because it's not a private interest. You're talking about property tax, sales tax, jobs for Fairfieldians. I understand it. it's, a dis, it's a legitimate discussion. I hope you don't, but it's a legitimate discussion. What's not legitimate is almost any other thing that I can think of. It's probably to benefit somebody unnamed out there for some other reason, uh, probably illegitimate. So that's my only thought tonight. Um, leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you. William Penn to be followed by Len Linda Tenbrink. I've been a resident here since 1973. Uh, my stepfather retired from, from the military and uh, chose this place uh, for location. You know, it's a wonderful community that to raise a family with. Um, you know, I, I, I look at, I've, I've been all around this county and uh, I, I mean, there's places I know where we're just cracking in a sidewalk and I could tell you what kind of, of foliage is growing there. Wine grapes, not on the cracks in the sidewalk, but wine grapes, walnuts, tomatoes, you name it. I mean, there's so much that can be grown out in the, out in, in, in the valley. As far as growth goes, uh, I got two minutes. Okay. We're, we're, we're all old enough, you know, where we've experienced a, like a, a first time uh, fish aquarium, you know, one of those little the five gallon aquariums and everything. First time, you know, we put it, go down to, to what used to be Kmart and get some fish, or our thesis uh, when it was around and get some fish. Put too many fish in there, what happens? All the fish die. We can't handle the growth that we have right now, but there, if, we, if we set it up and sustain what we got and look at projects that can sustain what we got and, and set up things to where they can flourish that's that's the avenue to go um with real estate i mean you know we got we, we got a bubble we, i mean things are just expanding and we've all blown bubbles before have you ever like blown bubbles and there's a bubble inside of a bubble that's what we want we want to have that bubble inside of a bubble so when this bubble pops there's still something going to be there that can't happen if we just keep on expanding growth, 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 growth. Let's try to preserve what we have. I've spent the past year out on the street. That's something that needs to be addressed. I've seen more weight than myself in methamphetamines and fentanyl out there. There's enough guns and ammo in the hands of the lawless that are out there that I've seen, personally seen. These are things that we need to take care of. You know, it's, all the, everything else would be for naught if we don't take care of these things first. Thank you, William. Uh, next, we have Linda Tenbrink to be followed by Cliff Howard. Linda Tenbrink, I live at 5260 Gordon Valley Road. Um, I would ask you to stick to the plan. We have the Sassoon Valley Strategic Plan, very well thought out, accepted by the community, accepted by the landowners. Everybody in agreement, stick to that plan. We have the Sassoon Valley AVA, American Viticultural Area. I sent you all copies of what that area is. You ask, um, the question has come up many times, what are the boundaries of Susan Valley? You have the plans, you have the pictures, those are the boundaries. <coughs> Don't cross the line, okay? It's like you're married to a really pretty wife, 
Susun Valley is that really pretty wife and everybody's looking at her and everybody wants to stand next to her and maybe get at her and it's your job as her spouse as the next related to them to defend her and I ask that you do that thank you thank you next Cliff Howard to be followed by Lisa Howard Hello, Council, Interim City Manager, Mayor Price. My name is Cliff Howard. I represent Solano County Farm Bureau. And uh, Solano County Farm Bureau has an interest in preserving agriculture and will not support any uh, plan that you have that does not support agriculture in Solano County. Thank you. And now Lisa Howard. to be followed by Jeremy Rice. Hello, council members, city manager, city attorney, mayor, thank you. Lisa Howard here. You've heard me speak on this topic many times, and I can attest that I've been to every meeting that you have posted. You can ask your lovely consultant. And I have never seen these maps before. Is that weird? I think it's weird. I think it's weird that we're at this meeting today and it's the first time I saw that. It's the first time I saw the one of the lower Susun Valley too. I'm assuming it's the first time you guys have seen it. So it might take you a little time to get your head around it. And in all due respect to the consultants that you hired and all of the meetings that they had, you know what they were looking for? Landowners that would say yes to development. They weren't listening because I can tell by the report that they're putting up there for you, they weren't listening to the no's. They weren't listening to what the landowners really want. They were listening for yeses. And boy, did they put those yeses up there, but they didn't put all the no's. I hope today you hear the no's. That little green area, it's already developed. What you looking for there? Give them some water, some sewer. In fact, every landowner that was on that meeting Almost all of them were present. Only one said, please provide us sewer. One. There's a lot of landowners in that little green box. The blue box next to that, that's where our property is. I can tell you what, they heard a lot of no's in that meeting. I didn't hear a single yes in that blue box, unless someone said it in private. I am the one that said the orange box wasn't great for farming. I didn't say it wasn't farming. I didn't say we should develop it in the city of Fairfield. <laughs> what I said is the Susun Valley Strategic Plan has already looked at that corner for alternative farming purposes, like a resort, like agritourism buildings, like an oxbow. But guess what we can do that under? Under the county, under the Susun Valley Strategic Plan, allow farming to still happen, allow community to still flourish. We don't need it to be annexed for it to be good. South of the county, I mean south of I-80 in the south part of the county. Again, you know what I see on her map? The one person that said yes, but ignoring all the no's. So again, turn your ears on. I know you are. You got a room full of no's and you'd have a lot bigger room full of no's if you were making a decision tonight. And know that the night that you're making a decision, this room will be standing room only telling you no. Thank you. Thank you. Jeremy Rice. Hello, Council. My name's Jeremy Rice. Um, my husband and I have been residents here for about 15 years. So we are on Rockville Road, uh, just west of Sassoon Valley Road. We moved here for what it is, not for the vision that you are presenting here today. We love the agriculture that we have, and we love the planet that our ag culture has for the growth. Um, we don't wanna see schools. We don't wanna see cities. We don't wanna see more increased traffic. We already have people that are skirting the 80 traffic by taking Green Valley Road, the 55 mile an hour Rockville Road, and then up through Sassoon Valley Road. If we add more to that industrial or residential, it's only gonna get worse. And it's only gonna become more dangerous. Uh, so we would just prefer to say that I echo everything that everyone else has already said 
and just don't touch it. Let them plan it. Thank you. Thank you. I don't currently have any hands raised on Zoom. So with that, we are uh, hoping. Madam Clerk, we do have a, uh, a hand raised on Zoom. I can bring them in if you're, uh, if you're ready. Okay, he just put that up. Okay. Thanks, Brian. Certainly. And we have Maureen Corder. And Maureen, feel free to uh, unmute your microphone. And you have three minutes. Hi, I hope, I hope you can hear me. Yes. Oh, good, okay. Uh, thank you for uh, for taking me um, on this very short notice. Um, I'm sorry I, I came into the meeting late, but I just want to voice my um, concern uh, uh, that uh, all of the other speakers have raised. Um, I believe that um, this plan is not uh, ideal for this area. Um, I, I feel that the residents of the community are not being listened to uh, by the um, the evaluators and planners who have um, put together this particular uh, map and plan, um, as well as the previous ones, and that uh, this needs continued development and discussion with the community, uh, as opposed to trying to push it forward. Um, as everyone else has stated, we we don't need to rush this process. Uh, there is only rush on on the part of the developers uh, who are trying to make a quick buck uh, in this very hot um, market that we have going. Uh, you know, it, we need to slow this process down and make sure that everyone that is currently in this community is happy with. Um, what what we are going to move forward with, not just people who are looking to make a quick dollar, taking advantage of, of this beautiful, beautiful area. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. And I see there's there are two hands raised now. Brian, can you bring in the next person? Thank you. Yes, we have Jose McNeil and Josie McNeil, sorry. And feel free to unmute and you have three minutes. Actually, it is Jose McNeil. Um, I don't go by Josie too often. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I was calling in to support uh, the Sassoon Valley plan and the Sassoon Valley ABA. This is a very special area that we need to protect. <laughs> and uh, it, uh, it, it is a, a gem. Um, any development into this valley should be ag centric should conform to the Sassoon valley plan that plan was worked on through the uh, general plan update which i had the pleasure of serving on the committee for the sloan county general plan update and crafting this the plan for the valley um i think you you need to listen to the people in the valley and the people who crafted that plan the Sassoon valley grape growers association and, uh, and honor the ABA that was fought hard for. Um, I, I hope that you take, take it to your heart and take it to your mind of what this valley is and what it represents to all of Solano County. Thank you. Thank you. And next speaker is Nora Dizon. And Nora, you have three minutes. Feel free to unmute. And it looks like you're still muted, Nora. Yeah. Oh, yes, we can hear you now. Okay, wonderful. Yes, um, I want to echo the dismay that many of the people present have expressed. It seems as if the city only listens to developers. The rest of us who live here want to see the needs of everyone to be considered, especially as this is the general plan. It is imperative 
upon you city council members to please do what is best for everyone, not just for those who are trying to develop, build more houses, etc. I'm not against growth, but it has to be responsible growth. And it has to be done in a way that is equitable to everyone, not just ones who want to build here, but those also who live here already. Anyway, I hope that you will think and consider about the needs of all the residents of Fairfield and please don't be a horrible neighbor to our Susan Valley um, neighbors. Let's just please be cognizant of the beautiful plants that they've got and we should leave them alone. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, and if anyone else wishes to speak on this item, please use the raise your hand feature. And seeing none, we have no further speakers. Thank you. So uh, we'd like to continue the discussion. Um, there are uh, three questions that we, we hope um, council can give uh, input on. Are there areas where the city should consider development? Where should the city consider jobs oriented uses if we're planning for elsewhere? Are there ideas on how to reduce impacts to agricultural areas? And then are there any concepts or strategies council recommends to support Sassoon Valley agritourism? So I'm going to walk us back through to the north. And I did just want to offer a clarification. These areas that are outlined in the colors are merely intended to help facilitate conversation about parcels um, should, should the need arise. Um, so to, to get us started, are, are there areas in the north based on input that we shared from um, Sassoon Valley residents, from stakeholders, um, or from my presentation? Um, are there areas where Fairfield should consider development north of I-80? Mr. Mayor, this is Kat. I'd like to speak. Go ahead, Councilwoman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think it's uh, pretty clear. I just want to say that, you know, I've been here most of my life and most of my life was spent in Gordon Valley, Susan Valley, and of course, schooling inside Fairfield. Um, we absolutely just need to take Susan Valley off the map. Um, there's no area in Susan Valley that I would consider uh, developing anything. Um, I also own property uh, out next on Rockville Road. And um, my husband and I are happy with the way it is with some walnuts in the front. Um, and someday uh, we hope to retire there. Um, but the bottom line is, I think we've heard over and over again now from folks who currently live and make their livings in Susan Valley. We already know that Middle Green Valley is being eaten alive um, by homes um, and uh, will be, and that we're supposedly going to supply water if, if my um, colleagues have their way. Um, so here we are, and I want to just say enough is enough with eating up our prime agricultural property in this part of Solano County, number one. So my answer is no to any development. Number two, I would like to say that we um, need to do better, and I've said this before, I'm going to repeat it, uh, working with Susan Valley. Um, Susan Valley is connected to us. I feel like we're um, kind of twins, um, but we haven't treated uh, each other really um, in a good manner. And I, I suggest that we do a lot more to work with them. Um, at one time, Chuck, Tim and I sat on a um, committee, the Susan Valley Fund, 
uh, to look at uh, different ways that we could work together and Susan Valley itself could thrive. We're now seeing a lot of those things that we worked on. Um, let's not destroy that. I've talked about, we're trying to uh, make downtown Fairfield a destination perfect. Um, we, it, downtown Fairfield runs right into Susan Valley. Um, so we need to work together and bring those products in to, uh, to feature in our restaurants downtown and, um, and vice versa. We want people from inside the city and who come to visit here and stay in our hotels to go out and tour Susan Valley. Um, so I think that's pretty clear for me. I don't have anything else to say. Um, that's where I stand, Mr. Mayor. So thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Councilman Tim, please. Thank you. Do we have an overlay of the uh, Susan Valley general plan from the county? Do you have that overlay? I don't have an overlay, but I do have a map of the strategic plan areas. This okay. what you're thinking about. All right, and it defines this, the boundaries that were decided on many years ago through the county, through the general plan. Can, yeah. I'm, Linda, Jennifer, you agree with this? Yes. Okay. All right. In transparency, Linda and I talked this afternoon, too, as well. So, all right, let me take a look at this. Thank you, Mayor. You can go ahead. Thank you. Nope. Oh, no. Oh, oh sorry. You just oh, like no. it. Sorry. <laughs> I want to look at it. <laughs> yeah, no. And, and also, too, when you get up here and you say, we've never seen this, you've never seen this, we're still in the process of talking about this. Uh, I haven't seen this. This is something that came out of a meeting a couple of months ago. So it's a work in progress. I think we take a deep breath. We can continue to talk. There's some people here I value your opinions very much, um, and I might call on you. Yeah, so we're going to get through this. There's no developers. I haven't talked to any developers. We hear this all the time. Developers want, developers want. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, I sat on, and Ms. Moy made mention, Susan Valley Fund Advisory Board back in 2007. And like I told Linda Tenbrink today, the plans that we put in motion many, many years ago through Rickwood and everybody else are finally coming to fruition. We're not stupid. We get it. Um, and I think we can find a balance. You just give us a little time. And if you'll just leave this up just a little bit longer, mm -hmm. Mayor, I'll let somebody else speak, and I want to look at this overlay. Thank you. Any other comments? Mr. Vice Mayor, Yeah, please. thank you, Mr. Mayor. I believe um, uh, Dwayne Crom just said he mentioned the process, having a process. I agree. I think there definitely needs to be more of a process involved in this. And, you know, we do hear what everybody's saying. And uh, thank you, Marilyn, for reading my quote earlier. I appreciate that. <laughs> which I meant, okay, so I, I do think that uh, um, my colleagues and, and uh, me, we all need to really uh, kind of do a sort of a, a, a slow turn and take a good look at everything because this is going to mean the future of, you know, our grandchildren, our kids, our grandchildren and their kids and everybody else. So, I mean, this is such an important decision to make for our city and for our county. Um, it's not something that we should take lightly and rush into ever. So um, I, I agree that we need to really, with what Mr. Crom said, to really look at a process where we can have some type of decision made, but a collective decision. So that's my comment, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Councilwoman Bertone, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And thank you for everyone coming out this evening. So according to the Sassoon Valley Strategic Plan, agriculture in Sassoon Valley produces nearly 20 million in sales annually. Wow. In addition to wine, grapes and grapes, the area is also recognized for its farm fresh fruits and vegetables, as well as nuts, legumes, and flowers. The federal government classified Sassoon Valley as an American Viticulture Area, or AVA, in 1982, the second such classification in the nation and just a year after the famous 
Napa Valley AVA to the west. Like Napa Valley, Sassoon Valley is officially recognized as part of the North Coast Appalachian, which also includes Sonoma, Marin, Lake, and Mendocino counties, and is renowned for ultra premium wines. The productive soil, mild climate, and good water quality and availability make Sassoon Valley a unique and important agricultural area and asset. That's in the strategic plan. So my, my question is, how is our decision making informed by this strategic plan, which by the way, I just recently found out about, I haven't really had an opportunity to really digest the strategic plan done by the county, and this is as of February 2011. How do our options take into consideration the strategic plan that's already in place and that was the result of a well done process? That, that wasn't rhetorical, I mean, do we? Oh, so I can share that. Um... So the question is, how does our, how do our, our options or plans, how do they dovetail with what already exists? Because what I'd hate to see us do is to recreate the wheel. I mean, if the, if the hard work has been done and the hard decisions have been done, you know, I would hope that we would minim minimize recreating the wheel because I can tell you this, on Sunday afternoon, I took a drive through Sassoon Valley. It is a destination. What's happening in Sassoon Valley is working. Their families, people having wine, people spending disposable income, people waking up in the morning saying, let's go to Sassoon Valley today. There you go. So, so if that's working already, I'd hate to, for us to recreate the wheel and to somehow mess that up. It looks like they, they've got it right out there. It's beautiful. My 22-year-old daughter and her boyfriend go out to uh, you know, the wineries and Mancus Corner and their butterflies out there even. I mean, it's, it's, it's gorgeous. So what I, what I wanna say is I'm concerned that we don't mess, that, that we don't fix something that ain't broken. And if we, put so, if we put cement on that premium soil, oh my goodness. There are other places in this city where we can build stuff. Like somebody mentioned, let's start with downtown and, and put some buildings there. But that Sassoon Valley is proven itself to be a regional destination now. So I guess, so that's where I stand. I, what's happening in Sassoon Valley is a beautiful thing. And so I personally don't, I, I think you're doing great, keep up the great work. And let this city get out of the way of that, is, is, is my opinion. So, I, so I'll just end with my question with, that I began with. So how, how is our process for the city council informed by the strategic plan of the county for Sassoon Valley? Because I think it would behoove us to really dig into that plan and make sure that what we're doing is commensurate with the plan that's already in place. Yep, so this was something that we posed with the, the groups that we talked with, how can the city be supportive of the strategic plan? Um, the zoning in the strategic plan does allow for resorts, large wineries as conditionally permitted uses. And um, we did explore, well, what would, um, infrastructure to these larger, more intense agritourism uses look like. And we had heard that that can cre create development pressure. So they, they really felt like there wasn't really um, a good opportunity to do that um, in terms of provision of services. But one of the questions that we are posing to the council tonight is how can the city be more supportive of Sassoon Valley? And 
we want to hear your ideas on how that can actually well, happen. Okay, well, well, my idea on that is for there to be more of a process, like the vice mayor said and like Dwayne Crom said, more of a process, more of an iterative process, and, and to, for the city council to really absorb the strategic plan to really understand what's in that strategic plan and make sure that we're not doing something that does not, that does, that is in conflict with, with the strategic plan, which is a well done plan. I mean, I'm only one person, but I can just say, I'd, 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 I'd like for us to let Sassoon Valley do what they're doing because it's working. So. The, the more consistent we can be with the, with the strategic plan, I think the safer we'll be, but we need more time. We need to talk, we need to have more of a process. So that's my two cents. And those were good two cents too. I'd like to share with you that one of the real gems of my experience living in Fairfield, and that's Sassoon Valley Elementary School. You wanna see students who are experiencing what it is like to see what you eat before you eat it. And those students out there are just as happy as they can be. And the fact that many of them have projects, they grow things, things they know they're going to be eating. It's a beautiful area. And I think 360, Mancus Corners, whole, all of those are elements that we need to not only keep and preserve, but make certain that they can stand with, uh, can withstand all the pressures that come from folks who want to turn it into something else and then they move on. We stay, they move on. So I applaud all of you for speaking and I am particularly impressed with your reasoning, your thought process, and the goal that you are setting out for this city council. And we are at the position now where the seven of us will take all this information and I hope our decision will not disappoint you. Once you destroy the valley, it's gone forever. And for future generations, and, and let me just share with you, I have friends who come from all over the United States and some of them are from abroad. And the first place I take them in the summer is out to Larry's. And they just cannot believe it. This is here all the time. Take a look at what they do out there for Halloween and for Christmas and all those other things. You're not going into a grocery store or some mega market. You're going into an area where the food is actually produced. And it's always fascinating to watch people eat their way through their shopping experience. Sassoon Valley is a gem. And I really get irritated when I talk to someone who wants to put up another big hunk of concrete and think nothing about what goes on the wall that's going to make it at least eye appealing to folks who live in that area. And I'm thinking of Rockville Terrace in particular. We've got to get this right this time and not just for the next 10, 15 years, but until 2050. So thank you very much for making us think. <coughs> I really appreciate what the consultants are doing, laying out the options for us. Once you destroy it, try rebuilding it. It'll never be the same. So thank you very much. Any other comments? Uh, Councilwoman Panduro, please. Thank you, Mayor. I also agree with my colleagues that we need to, you know, create a process, a more in-depth process. And also, um, I want to better understand how this piece of land is not only on our strategic plan, but another one that was already in existence. So just understanding better why there's two and not, re re not recreating the wheel to ensuring that we're moving in the best possible way. With regards to Susan Valley being a gem, I am a big, I'm always talking about Susan Valley. I had a friend here from Napa and <laughs> I took him to some of the wineries and I love that I can do that, that I can be like, hey, I know you're from Napa, but guess what we have? And he was so impressed by the valley itself, just driving through it. And he, and he actually said, he's like, wow, Fairfield's really, you know, it's beautiful out here. I'm like, I, he goes, you can't even tell you're not a Napa. <laughs> like, well, you can't, but you are not. And it's, it's, it's great that we have that in our own backyard, not only for ourselves, but like for our other neighbors and for them to see that we, you know, we're doing great things. 
and he was very impressed. Um, he's going to be creating his own winery in his own backyard, and so for him to be able to be come over here and realize that this exists, and he's lived in Napa his entire life, had no idea this was even over here. And I, I'm just, I get so excited when I get to introduce people to our Susun Valley and get to show them what we're doing. And so I am, I agree with my colleagues with regards to um, taking it, you know, taking it, bringing it down a little bit more, and just taking it, you know, a little slower, so we can, so we can do it right. Thank you, Councilman Tonneson, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, can you go to the slides where you you, you looked like you were going to give us yeah, right, back one, three alternatives. Um, so this is just for Nelson Hill. These were the. Is there alternatives that you were going to give us tonight? Because let me let me tell you where I'm going with mm -hmm. that. Is I remember us all saying, "Leave the valley alone." So if there's going to be areas, and maybe Chuck might want to chime in on this, if there's going to be areas where there is going to be some agro-tourism, you know, what does that look like? Do we, what are those spots like? Because I've, I've got written down here, how do we protect the valley? Um, so if, if maybe Chuck, you can chime in if we want to, where would, where would things go if we were to make any, any moves, which at this point, I don't want to, but um, 30 years down the road, who knows? All right, thank you, Mayor. Mayor, please. Yeah, thank you. One of my concerns is I want to see the county zoning, the ETC. I want to see an overlay where they have said that a hotel is acceptable, a winery is acceptable, and I want to see that. There's going to be parts of – we kind of got the short end of the stick when – this cherry stem, so to speak, came about, I don't know how many years ago, 30, how long have you been out there? The house is 30 years ago or so, right? So, so 50 years. Okay, so now we're, trying to, now we're trying to fix it. And we're not in a hurry. I don't care what anybody says. We're not in a hurry. But, but I want to see what the vision was when the county did the, the specific plan or the general plan with this. And I want to see if that's changed. And I want to see what the owners have to say. And when, when you talk about it's your land and how we decide impacts you, you're absolutely right. But it also impacts another 120,000 people that live here. And it's not the least against the most. It's what has worked. Somebody was smart enough to put this together. And Rick, I look at you specifically uh, because you were a big part of this. But I want to see what the overlay shows for hotels. I've already said that. So, It'll take some time because I think there's a, there's parts of the area that I'm okay with annexation, and I'm talking like right off the freeways, right? And I see Jennifer going, no, 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 no. But somebody's needs might be somebody's needs might be different. But what I'm talking about too is it's such a small strip of property, and and don't think that if you if you allow one thing here, if you allow water or annexation and it increases development pressure, it very well might. I see Jim DeClo going, yeah. And I don't, I don't necessarily disagree with that, but I want to see that first because there's other landowners and not, what is, what is the valley? So I'm going to jump real quick. I'm going to go across the freeway to Anheuser-Busch and Linda Anheuser-Busch is in the city of Fairfield, all right? But the surrounding area in front of it between that and the freeway is county. Uh, so there's specific areas that I want to look at and if we have to take it piece by piece or parcel by parcel, then I'm willing to do that. And I think the, the entire board is as well, because we want to see what it was zoned for, what the property owners are doing today, and what the property owners want to do in the future. So is that, I'm kind of all over the board, but specific plans from the county that we can see? Um, so this map right here shows the zoning for each of the parcels and the, the parcels in the pink that say ATC NC, that's where um, Tell me what ATC NC means. ATC NC is Agriculture Tourist Center District. And then the ATC and what is, and I don't mean to put you on the spot if you don't know it's okay because I don't know. What is allowed in the ATC NC? Yep, so ATC NC, I have uh, the zoning right here. Um, and there's a description of the purpose right here. Standards for ATCNC allow a variety of uses that will help foster small tourist-oriented centers within the valley. 
Um, so you'll see here that um, in that third column, um, what is allowed and then what requires a municipal uh, well then that's, this might be permit. this might be might not take as long as i thought it it would if i could get this in a printed form so we can actually take a look at it and then i can bring it to some of the people that i've been talking about and talking to and say show me i think we'd all be willing to do that so is that is that okay looking at the city manager i think that would be easier yeah that'd be a great idea and it would answer a lot of my questions so all right Thank you. Any other comments on if Any other where comments? we should develop in Sassoon? I, I'm hearing generally um, that we should be exploring other areas, and that was an, another one of our questions. How about um, we just wait until we get all the information, we can discuss it more in depth and intelligently. That's okay. We're not in a hurry, correct? Yeah. No, we're, we're in no hurry. Um, as we've discussed previously, uh, the only thing that we have any timeline on is our housing element, which we have you know now separated from the general plan process so that we can get to meeting our state requirements with the housing element. So as far as the general plan process is concerned, it's, it's fully up to council at how, how slow or quickly we go through that process. So what I'm hearing from council uh, is, is taking some of these areas uh, looking at that specific plan of the county, or not the specific plan, the strategic plan of the county, starting to overlay that and, and have some conversations of if there's anything there that is of interest to the community uh, as well as to the city uh, that creates the opportunity for win-wins uh, as a, as a long-term outcome. Excellent. Thank you. And David, I, I'd like to see us slow down a little bit on Nelson Hill. Uh -huh. My sense is that that's going to create all sorts of difficulties, not only for those of us who are here now, but those who follow us. So you got to really be careful with that one. I would second that, Harry. Are there any other questions that council would like to explore tonight of the ones that I, I have posed or we can discuss at a further time? Are, are there any other questions or things you want us looking at as we, you know, continue down this iterative process? I'd like to get the information first. Gotcha. And, All right. and, and I thank you, Scott Thomas and I were just talking to, it seems like every time you come and present, it's like you're going to get beat up and we certainly don't mean that. <laughs> just thank you for giving us the information. Of course. I think all of us want to thank you. Of course. And David is both out there. If there's no other business before this body. Uh, Dwayne, come, come on up, please. You guys want to come see what Sassoon Valley is all about? Come out for Passport Sunday and visit all 11 participating wineries. We'll take you around. I will personally uh, be your tour guide if you wish, but you can get tickets through Susan Valley Vintners and Growers. You can contact me directly. I'd be happy to invite you. It's a perfect opportunity to see what we provide to your residents of the city of Fairfield and allow them to come enjoy our valley. And I would like to say, Pam, that $20 million figure that was in 2011 is far underestimated of what we do now. I would say we're three to four, maybe five times that now, honestly. I'm on board. Thank you. And I would like to share one other, one other observation about Sassoon Valley. Take a good look at all the people who are riding their bicycles, who are running, who are skateboarding, and they're out there whenever the weather is fairly decent. Some of them are out there no matter what the weather is. But it really is a regional draw, so we're fortunate. Thank you very much. No other business before this body? We are concluded.